What up, Globetrotters? It's Jay Blaze. And Vanessa. And we're back with another episode of... The Mr. and Mrs. Global Podcast. And on this episode of the How to Make Money on Social Media Podcast series, we're on episode seven, where we talk about navigating the challenges of social media marketing. And if this is your first time watching the channel, make sure you hit subscribe and like, and make sure you turn those post notifications on. There are so many social social media platforms out there mm -hmm. when I started remember I had a private profile Instagram profile before I was overwhelmed and yeah I realized through you how different all those platforms are and the different value yes it, it, it's super crazy because as we continue on our social media journey more and more platforms keep um, getting added, more and more platforms go away in popularity, rise in popularity, get restructured in the way that they pay and the way that you market, communities move and change. But I think it's a total representative of today's life. So first of all is good when you're flexible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you try all those platforms, and see okay which value do they bring so for example when we started we started with tiktok yes and we felt that it was a very safe space for us mm -hmm. to experiment with those couple comedy videos and it was super interesting because just as life you know life is so many ups and downs so many crazy things going on right now in the last three to five years so you have to practice being flexible i think the world was used to everything being one way for so long and never changed so quick than it, now yeah and i think now it's changing every three months yes. everything is just changing so rapidly so it's all and i think the winners you know just like apple that's the reason why apple comes out with an iphone every single year right because the technology gets faster the people changing you know people are traveling so they're getting more experience they're getting more mm -hmm. educated through these platforms and through technology and computers in general so flexibility is at the forefront of being able to navigate the challenges of social media marketing. Yes, and I agree with you, like lives change every three months to pay so close attention to the social media platforms. I would say in the last two years, every three months, there was a change. Yes, yes, definitely. I mean, it's crazy because a lot of creators, I know that they complain about like unstable income and how it's super hard to get more predictive income. And I think that that was more or less with the bonuses. I think mm -hmm. the bonuses were a way for new creators to get in. But I think the same uh, sentiment for the creators that were already on the platforms, if you already had an audience and you already were super Super developed in communicating with your audience, then your income might have still been stable, but your growth might have been unstable, right? Because you had to be flexible and adjust to what the world, the world likes short form content, but they also are going back to long form content crazy enough. Yes, and we knew this from the beginning. So what we did were we would focus on several sources of income and several platforms. And then there are also platforms like YouTube, where you not get at the monetized from the beginning you have to gain a certain threshold like for example 4000 watch hours it is and 1000 subscribers and 1000 uh -huh. subscribers before the features are not enabled so first of all you just work for this and yeah this is why a strategy we talked about it in another episode is so important because we knew this already and knew okay for the next month we won't make mo money with youtube but it's important to grow there first yes so uh, i'll give you guys a little breakdown of our strategy step by step so we got on facebook instagram youtube and TikTok knowing that they had creator funds. Now, a lot of creators complain about the creator funds not paying. But if you're one of the top creators, which we were, we, you know, we were, we went to a hundred thousand in six months on Instagram, we're, you know, tens of thousands on each platform. So it was very, it became very easy to make five hundred to a thousand dollars on each platform, right? So we had, you know, four different platforms that we could make five hundred to a thousand dollars on minimum. Sometime it would be more. Or sometime usually not less 
and we had a bunch of different pages. So we had our pages together and our separate personal pages, which made it easy when people ask, well, how did you guys make enough money to take care of yourself? And I would always tell them we posted the same video on every platform. So we're getting paid for the same work multiple times. And a lot of times this video goes viral, that video goes viral. So think of a thousand dollars from every platform from multiple accounts, you know, uh, it starts to definitely add up. And I think that that was a good way to build an audience so that you can get in touch with that audience and learn what they actually want while you're building the 4,000 watch hours and the 1,000 subscribers. Exactly. So what we also did was had those several pod platforms, but also, yeah, look for new opportunities. So what we would do is be always up to date, which changes are about to come on those platforms. And they might be not in the news, but if you pay close attention and you research and you look for it, you will find the head of Instagram talking or new changes at Meta. And we did this in time. So to become ahead, we always would pay attention to this. In, in, in my opinion, um, a lot of people were niching down mm -hmm. and we were already focused on being multi-format creators so that we could literally um, attract different audience. And I feel like that's the difference between YouTube and all the other platforms is YouTube really makes you gain a following that it's like the a thousand true fans. So it tries to get you to get a thousand true fans that it, they know that are gonna come back before they let you in the partner program. But of course, they had a bonus program too. So which was super great while we were building that 1,000 subscribers, while we were building those 4,000 watch hours, we got paid some money, you know, to continue on our journey. So by the time we got monetized with everything else, we were able to uh, make some money along the way, which is super different than how social media was before. It was more favorable this way, to be honest with you. Definitely helped. And we also had our personal pages where we would make money too. So we already had the equipment. And then when there was time in between, you would shoot some music reels. I would shoot some reels with fashion or hair, makeup. So we got this in between um, too. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was, it, it's been a super interesting journey. Um, from the beginning, I told Vanessa to look at it. I, I, I think building a YouTube page is similar to building a business. So I always said, look at it from the point of view, six months, one year, 18 months, two years. And it's gonna take a minimum of two years to get everything stable. You know, where I think we're definitely on that trajectory to get everything stable, to make profit, to not have to buy equipment all the time, to not always have to reinvest. And I told her we're definitely gonna have to put our heads down and focus and get every little little bonus program every little merch sale every and any little bit of income we can scrape that together put it in a pot that'll allow us to continue on and we can develop a following and an audience that will buy from us trust us and come back at the same time which i thought was super amazing because social media just wasn't like that and there was so much talk in the news and on these platforms but honestly i think that it was such a positive thing for our generation yes and you only have to grow once yes so that was very motivating this thought to know okay i put this work into this two years and I grow and this fan base is there and will hopefully never go away. And then you can build up from there. Yes, because once everybody knows your name, you know, the most important asset that you have is not money. It's not the social media platforms. It's, it's your yourself. name and likeness. Mm -hmm. So once everyone knows who you are, there should be nothing more valuable than that. There shouldn't be a material possession. So if you need to wear Gavinci in or Dior in a video to get people to watch your video, you still have work to do. If you need to buy uh, fancy cars or Rolexes, you still have work to do. Jay-Z and Beyonce, they can stand on Jay-Z and Beyonce. And that's the reason why their brand is so much different than everyone's. And I think that this generation needs to learn that and respect that, right? Names and brands, they last forever if you do right by them. And everybody wants the quick way, but nobody wants to navigate the challenges and really build up their name where people can trust it. You know Put what I mean? Put the work in, even Put if the it work takes in. decades. Yes, 100%. And I think that a big part of that is being able to 
you know, stay inside and do your homework, if you will. Like when you're a kid and everyone's outside playing and you're doing your homework and you're studying. Now, when you're an adult, those types of techniques and training and discipline really help you with dealing with family and friends because we had to say no to a lot of parties, a lot of birthdays, a lot of holidays. And it, it was a little bit difficult to get that point across to our family and friends because there's always this challenge of, are you making enough money? Are you doing the right thing? And it's like, I'm building a foundation that lasts forever. You know, the name Mr. and Mrs. Global, Jay Blaze, Vanessa, people are starting to trust that name and embody that name and it stands for something. It stands for hard work. It stands for not taking the shortcut. It stands for strategic. It stands for marketing. It stands for something, you know, and people and, 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 and I think most people never develop to that point, but it's something that we all have the opportunity to do. Exactly. And yeah, it's balancing friends and family. That's interesting because there are some people who um, yeah, not very familiar with social media, don't have much to do with it. Our opinion is this these days when you want to have a successful business, when was there a time that you had the chance to market your business for free on social media? Yes, uh, that's perfect. Right? It, yes, so, and I think that, sorry to cut you off, yes. but I think that it's super interesting because you get to show qualities that most people should continue to develop at the end of the day, you know? Like being consistency, consistency. You can really learn if someone's consistent if they're mm -hmm. showing up Uh, on social media consistently. The second thing is you can also see if they're improving, yeah. right? Because some people are super consistent, but they lack the soul to look at themselves and say, hey, let me improve. So there's tons of people out there that have posted hundreds of times and they got no results because they just didn't improve. Yes, and especially lately, we have isolated our, us a little bit, guys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No joke. But we did this on purpose because we noticed whenever people were around, especially people who not do social media on a daily basis, we either would annoy them, which I can mm -hmm. totally understand. We can be super annoying to someone who has nothing to do with it. And then us talking about all the time about the numbers and which idea we're going to do next. <laughs> and the other thing is, yeah, we just want to be focused and not distracted. And yeah, let it, it, it takes, it takes time to, to be creative. It takes time. You, you have to be, It comes from the inside a lot. And for this, you need some calmness. And um, mm -hmm. we, we know this is, we do this now, but we know it's going to change when we more stable. And then we're going to go on birthday parties and go out. But we both know now it's not the time mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. make party and go out all the time and, and mingle with people because we're building our foundation and that comes first. And I love to do it with you that yes. we're not alone. I, can, I have so much respect for people who do this all on, on their own. Mm -hmm. um, definitely look for a community. Uh, that's so important that you communicate with others who go through the, the same because we get to a point where many people don't understand what are they doing yes. uh, I mean, every day. That's you, why you, also you, why we do this podcast. You know, I'm definitely going to say that's just an excuse because you can literally just go online and YouTube it or Google it how to become a social media influencer. And there's a statistic that I heard the other day is that there's over 2 million creators making over six figures, you know? But in that, what I say is, there was a short window of time with these bonuses. Meta always came out and they said for one year. So then that means for one year, you needed to get as much money as possible and develop a real fan base. And I think people forget that when you're developing a fan base, when you're developing your name, you're developing trust, but you're also developing a sales funnel for people to actually be able to buy things from you, right? Tom Cruise would not be Tom Cruise without getting people to buy his movie tickets. So no matter how long it takes you to get there, you got to build this trust and this foundation and this community that will buy from you. And people always seem to forget that people buy stuff from us at the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. They buy into our videos, they watch our videos, they're entertained, and we have to uh, the ability to buy, sell stuff, you know, whether directly or indirectly, you know? And that's because we took advantage of a lot of the new features, you know? Yes. So there are new features from those different platforms that come out. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you have to set this up. You have to set up your account 
like this and um, then you'll be able to use those features. Some of them you just get invited, so they monitor you and see, ah, okay, you hit a certain number, 100k, whatever, and then a button pops up and you can apply for something. And then we also got invited personally to YouTube, for example. Mm -hmm. we, we, were trying, we were trying pictures, we were trying reels, we were trying shorts, we were writing in the community tab. We were doing all of the, the new features that were popping up, the stories, they had like some... Uh, TikTok had like some invisible, uh, I forgot, like share now, right? We, we, we tried that. We try, we're doing podcasting. We're doing cooking shows. We're doing all the different features and formats to see which one our audience responds to us best in, which I think is super important to grow. And it's super important to be able to build a sales funnel through those because obviously if you're buying clothes and you take a picture of the clothes, it shows one dynamic. But if you can go on live with the clothes, if you can make a reel with the clothes and show how they fit, then it's a whole different dynamic and you have a better chance of getting sales and making income from that you know yes and in with the podcast for example we were thinking about maybe you can do this even when you travel you just mm -hmm. take the m microphones with you and you'll be able to record a podcast from everywhere mm -hmm. and yeah again be super flexible yeah she just let out one of our secrets we're going to turn this into a traveling podcast yes. at some point but you know but that that also came from us researching you know similar creatives yes. like the ideas like people we were a fan of or people that we were similar to we would always research what techniques and what features they were using to get the best examples we were looking at other people inside the atmosphere of uh, or the creative landscape to see where we fit and i think that's super important that we didn't just we focused on ourselves most of the time but we also weren't oblivious to everything else that was going on that was out there yeah and it's also super important to have a role model so mm -hmm. we use those people as role models they went the path that we want to go they have more experience they have millions of followers and you can learn so much from them yeah i mean it's it's you know we definitely researched them and there's so many things that we learned about you know navigating the challenges of social media marketing like we're starting to build an email list you know we have a website I saw so many creators that I knew once upon a time and they didn't even have a website and at the end of the day when you're building on these platforms I'm super conscious that we're renting our audience on the platforms. Mm -hmm. It's for a limited time. So you need to take advantage of, of having your own website, having your own email list, having your own connection with the fans to be able to drive them to different places. You know, Amazon, we've done Amazon affiliate programs and we've made sales there. And it's super important to start to harness that energy and harness that connection in case one of these platforms goes away. You can send an email and you can get a bunch of people on the new platform platform you know what i mean yes imagine the platform goes away or your account get blocked for some reason and then you lose all your audience on that platform but when you have an email list you can still reach out to them yeah and it definitely goes back to branding and people knowing your name because if people know your name and then all and they signed up for your email and then they get it Uh, email from Mr. and Mrs. Global. I'm like, oh crap! I didn't. I haven't seen Mr. and Mrs. Global on Instagram in a while. Oh, it, oh, it, it, the page is deleted. Oh, let me see what they're doing next because now they're familiar with you. They trust you. They've been expecting to hear from you, and you have a way to communicate with them. So it's super, super important that you really take the power of social media into your own hands and have your own direction, and don't rely on these platforms to figure it out for you because they won't. So to sum this up, it's important to be flexible. So to not be scared of trying new things, new uh, features of those social media um, platforms. And then also make sure that you have different sources of income, that you not only get money from one platform. Research other creatives, use them as a blueprint, as a role model. Build an email list, build, mm -hmm. have a website, have a good website that's good invested money have your own direction don't rely on these platforms too much and then also find a business model that makes money yeah i mean i'll, I'll i'm gonna give you guys a, a, another pro tip so ever since i had a regular job here's what i would do 
So we when in general, I, I'll first I'll do a nine to five breakdown and then I'll do a social media breakdown of how this works. So I would find a job where the hourly every you get paid every two weeks. So every two weeks, one source of every two weeks, it would pay my rent. That, that's first. So in two weeks, I would make my rent. Right. In the next two weeks, I would make the bills. Mm -hmm. Now, most people go, well, you don't have any money left over, for example. In, the, in that hustle, I would have sometime 500, 300, 800 dollars, depending on how many hours I worked mm -hmm. left over. But I always worked commission jobs. So and I love the fact that commission was variable and it was based upon my output. So I did my hourly job I get paid every two weeks for the rent. Then I would do every two weeks for the bills. Everything's taken care of. Let's say I got three to eight hundred dollars extra. I can save that, use it for entertainment, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I have my commission. And that's the part where I can rely on myself. So I would always pick things that I really liked and that I knew had high commission payouts if you did a good job. And fortunately for me, like when I was in sales, let's say my rent was paid, all my bills was paid, and then I got a $10,000 commission. Now imagine every single month that I do great, right? Let's say if three months or four months out of the year I do great, that means for the rest of the year I can really coast. And if you develop really good habits, you could have good to great months almost every single month and that's the the money that you use to save that's the money that you use to invest that's the money that you use to build new business opportunities and that's the same with these platforms with youtube youtube is our steady income and our foundation for let's say our rent and the other platforms pay for the bills and then we have our brand deals and then when we get the brand deals that's for us to save that's for us to reinvest that's for us to do different things but it was up to me to create those uh, you know that business model of knowing when the money's coming in how it's coming in how stable it is and what to do with it once it comes in mm -hmm. so set up a long form and a short form budget yes That's very important that you know, okay, in the short term, what I have to pay for when new opportunities come. And then also what I want to invest in the long form, in new equipment, in trips, whatever you do. Yes, you should always have, you know, a long form and a short form budget in mind because that helps you to navigate both your everyday life and six to 12 to one year, two years, three years out because you know okay I, i need to buy this equipment by this time to start this and if you really stick to it you know drake one of my favorite lines from drake is my life's a completed checklist write it down and stick to it so i remember this is our second season of the podcast we had a first season and we had a couple of episodes that we did about how to make money on social media before. But when we bought that equipment, we knew that we wanted to get an extra camera. We knew that we wanted to get a, a receiver for switching the camera angles. We knew we wanted to get a TV, an iPad, and all of that was done over the course of two years, mm -hmm. knowing that in the long term, we want to be able to have different ways to express ourselves if social media and when it changes exactly so thank you so much for watching until next time mr miss global we, we out plane tickets to your favorite city i got plans for your ring for your finger and it's sitting pretty i got bands for your story for your friends that's a smile from your face got you moving in my place yep plane tickets